I've got 10 tips you need to hear before you start home brewing. If you're a beginner home brewer, or even if you're an intermediate brewer, I think you'll get some value from this video. Hey fellow hop killers, my name is Dylan with the Hop Killer Brewery, where we bring you the brews, reviews, and how to's. And in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips all related to home brewing. These tips are geared towards the beginner home brewer and maybe somebody who hasn't brewed yet. But I promise if you're an intermediate brewer, even if you don't learn anything new necessarily, you might have a different perspective. I promise you and everybody you share your beer with will be thanking you for applying these tips to your brewing practice. Tip number one, relax. Don't worry and have a home brew. If you cruise the forums, Facebook groups, subreddit pages, you'll see this term thrown out there often, and it means just that. You're gonna have troubles and frustrations along your homebrewing career, and don't let them get you down. Not everything's gonna come out exactly how you wanted, not everything's gonna be perfect, but in the end, you're still creating beer, so it's not that bad of a deal. Relax, don't worry, and have a homebrew. Tip number two, fermentation is important. You can spend all the time in the world formulating the best recipe that's ever seen this planet, but if you don't have fermentation control covered, that beer will end up falling short. Ensuring you have a way to temperature control your fermenter, knowing how much yeast to pitch into your wort, and oxygenating before you pitch your yeast are all critical key fundamental, <laughs> critical key fundamental fermentation parts of brewing and with doing those you're gonna have a really good chance at having a great beer I already have a video out there covering yeast starters and basically yeast with fermentation if you haven't already make sure to check it out I'll make sure to link it down below tip number three sanitize 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 sanitization is a skill that you need to take extremely serious when it comes to home brewing it's not too complicated everything that your wart touches after the flame is turned off needs to be sanitized. Nothing can be sanitized if it isn't thoroughly clean though. So ensuring adequate cleanliness amongst everything, especially your fermenters, oxygenation stones, chillers, and whatnot, those need to be cleaned before they can be sanitized and learning to sanitize properly is something you will never regret. To sanitize immersion chiller inside of your wart for the last 15 minutes of the boil, hoses, siphons, fermenters, carboys, whatever, those all need to be sanitized as well. Well, a simple way to do that is just making a bucket of star sand solution, putting all your necessary tools, siphons, hoses, whatever inside of that to be sanitized. You have a carboy, no worries, pour some of the solution in, shake it all about and pour it out and you're good to go. Make sure you cover it with the sanitized tin foil in between your wart going in there so no bad things get in. Pro tip, make sure you get yourself a brand new clean spray bottle. Fill that with star sand so whenever you're in the brewing process after you've chilled your war and you're needing to transfer into your carboy, you can spray sanitize any surface that you need to. Tip number four, the KISS method. When just starting out, especially if you're doing all grain brewing, Keep it simple, stupid. The KISS method is don't go crazy with making your own recipes if you don't feel comfortable at first. If you do feel comfortable, limit yourself. You don't need 12 grain recipes to make a stout. You don't need eight hops in an IPA to make a great IPA. Keep it simple at first so you learn the ingredients. If you're making an IPA, keep it one to three grain and keep it to one to three hops at first until you learn what you're doing so that once you learn the ingredients, then you can use your knowledge and experience to then blend in more if you feel the need for it. I prefer to use a lot of base malt, a combination of two row and Pilsner, Maris Otter and two row, sprinkle a little bit of specialty malt here and there, but otherwise keep it simple. The more hops you do, the more muddled they tend to be. Now you can create a bunch of great flavors and aromas that you couldn't with two to three hops, but at the same time, you also don't get to find out what those two to three hops actually bring to the table. Smash beers are excellent learning tools smash being single malt and a single hop so using all maris otter and cascade for example and making a pale ale or an ipa would be a great way to learn both ingredients it's really good for learning it usually always makes great beer and it's really hard to mess up tip number five you do not need expensive equipment to make good beer all of my award-winning home brews have been brewed on a cooler mash tun into plastic carboys with a keg and the top cut off as a boil kettle you can make killer beer with almost any equipment. Craigslist, if you're just starting out, is one of the best places to find some really good deals on brewing equipment. All of my equipment was used when I first started, excluding one 10-gallon water cooler I use as a hot liquor tank. Everything else I bought from Craigslist on pennies on the dollar. 
If you haven't started brewing yet and you really want to dabble in all grain, I personally think a brew in a bag style with a keg with the top cut off as a boil kettle would be the best entry level equipment I could offer. Uh, get a propane burner that's nice, get a keg, cut the top off, get a nice brew bag, and you're pretty much set. If you want an independent mash tun or a three vessel system, like you might see on Instagram or YouTube videos alike, go with the cooler mash tun. They hold temperature well. They're easy to make false bottoms for or manifolds like I did out of CPVC. They're just bulletproof. They last a really long time if you take care of them and they're really cheap. Tip number six, constantly learn about brewing. No matter your goals as a home brewer, you should always be striving to produce better beer. Whether you wanna brew for yourself, brew for your friends, or eventually go pro, you need to be furthering your knowledge on brewing to do any of that. You should be trying to read anything you can, forums, books, what have you. You should be trying to watch anything you can. YouTube is a great source and listen to anything you can. There's a lot of great podcasts. More knowledge will get you to better beer as long as you implement that. Educate yourself and your beer will benefit from it. Tip number seven, water can make or break your beer. Beer is 90 to 95% water. If you're brewing with water that doesn't taste good, that's filled with chlorine or chloramines, the beer will suffer. If you're blessed to have good tap water, Mainly, you'll just need a carbon filter to remove any chlorine that's in there. Otherwise, you're pretty much set. I personally have really crappy water. It's really hard, very high mineral content. So I prefer to use an RO system. Now, if you don't have an RO system, you can go down to your 7-Eleven or grocery store or Safeway where they fill those big blue five gallon jugs. Get yourself two or three of those for five bucks a brew. Go fill them up and bring them and brew with that. Now, when you mess with RO water instead of tap water, you're stripping all of the minerals out of the water. So you'll need to adjust it. There's plenty of videos out there discussing water chemistry. Make sure your water is good quality. Tip number eight, get a quality temperature probe. There's a lot of probes out there. A digital readout one will be fine. If you spend anywhere from 10 to $20 on Amazon, you can get a pretty decent one. Uh, as long as you can calibrate the probe, it shouldn't really matter how much it costs as long as it holds its calibration. And if it doesn't, you can always check it. Uh, a simple way to check calibration of any temp probe is to make a glass of ice water, let it sit for about five minutes, and then insert the probe into the ice water. It should read 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius. And on vice versa, on the higher end, you can do boiling water and figure out whatever temperature water boils in your area based on altitude and make sure it's within a tolerance. And now even if you can't calibrate the probe, if you know the boiling water for your area is 212 degrees Fahrenheit and it's reading 214, you know it's always reading two degrees higher than it is. So if you're targeting 152 degrees in your mash and you're reading 154, you know you're on point. If you're reading 152 and you're targeting 152 knowing it's different, you know it's off in one direction or the other. So ensuring you have a good quality temp probe, making sure you check how close and accurate it is both on ice water and boiling, and ensuring you're adjusting it as needed based on the difference your probe is reading. Tip number nine, bottling sucks, keg if you can. A five gallon batch usually yields about 45-ish 12 ounce bottles. Bottling a batch of beer usually makes a big mess. It takes up a lot of time. It drastically increases your oxygen exposure, which is now the enemy of your finished fermented beer. Now, don't get me wrong. Bottling has been the go-to and the gold standard for all home brewers and even big breweries like Sierra Nevada still bottle condition their beer. It's relatively cheap. It's easy to do. There's tons of excellent information out there on how to do it. Personally, I've kegged everything since my first batch of homebrew. It just makes more sense to me instead of having 50 bottles to worry about and worrying about my priming sugar if that was proper and having inconsistent carbonations between the bottles and potentially picking up oxygen along the way. I just figured a keg's just a big bottle and I'm sure eventually after all the reading I did, I would have gone to a kegging system anyways. So I just did it right off the bat. It's really not too expensive. You can find Cornelius or Corny kegs, which are five gallons on Craigslist, pretty cheap and anywhere from the 20 to $50 range. Even if they need gaskets and seals replaced, that's about 
seven bucks. Kegging seems a little complicated at first, but I promise you it's really not. It's just one big bottle, and instead of priming sugar, you're using CO2 from a CO2 tank. You can buy a used corny keg, a five pound CO2 tank with a regulator and miscellaneous hoses and fittings for around 150 bucks. Now you factor in the two plus cases of bottles, so about 50 bottles, a bottling bucket, extra tubing, a siphon, a bottle capper, bottle caps, and whatnot, and all the time and energy and, and variability that comes with bottling, you're looking about $100 anyways, so for the extra cost that it would take you to go straight to a keg, I think it's well worth it. You're gonna save yourself a ton of time. Your significant other will much appreciate you not taking up the entire kitchen to bottle your beer or make bottle bombs if you incorrectly carbonated your beer wherever you choose to store them. Pro tip number two out of this 10 tip series, if you're worried about having somewhere to store the keg once it's done, if you use a mini fridge to temperature control your fermentation anyways, once you keg that beer, you no longer need it for the fermenter. So then you would just put the keg in there and for a about three dollars you can get a picnic tap some hosing and a ball lock connector you could be serving beer tip number 10 make sure you take a lot of notes you want to take as much notes as possible from start to finish from grain to glass and everything from your mill setting to the temperature of the grain the strike water the mash temperature the boil length additions all the basic stuff here's something you might not think about when you want to replicate the batch that you're currently brewing later down the road making sure you write down volumes and gravities are given but if you can taking ph readings on the brew day during fermentation are one thing to consider if you cold crash the beer or if you didn't cold crash the beer if you used a fining agent like biofine if you bottled it versus keg it all of these things add up so taking all these little notes along the way is going to benefit you greatly when you go to grab that old recipe sheet and you want to brew that batch again later down the road particularly important to take good notes when you have the beer you put all this work and time making the beer and now you get to finally enjoy it but you want to make sure you know what it tastes like in the moment so that later self, later you, knows what it should be like. I hope you got some value out of this video. All those 10 tips I've applied to my home brewing and I've gathered along the way starting to where I am now. If you did get any value out of this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you like brewing related videos, consider subscribing to the channel and making sure to hit that bell icon so you don't miss any new content that comes out. Thanks for watching guys and I will catch you on the next video.